Hi there. I have posted a number of videos about programming BASIC in the Apple II. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed a lot programming in BASIC as a teenager, but I must say I have never uh, learned uh, to uh, code in assembly for the Apple II. So when I was a kid, I had limited access to materials um, and I could not really figure them out. So yeah, although I wanted to program assembly, I just could never learn it. And uh, yeah, I thought now would be a great moment to fill that gap. Uh, there is this great book called Assembly Lines uh, uh, based on a number of articles written by Roger Wagner for computing magazines in the 80s that has been recently edited by Chris Torrance and uh, made into a single volume that you can buy. My uh, physical volume is on the way. I'm using the uh, soft copy now. Um, and, and by the way, Chris Torrance has a very nice uh, channel on YouTube with uh, great videos about this topic, so you should check it out. However, even with access to these books and these, uh, you know, better uh, learning materials, still I found the, the tools for programming assembly a bit clunky. Uh, you know, firing up a Merlin or another commercial assembly editor in the Apple II, it's, it just felt a bit contrived. I like using modern tools. I like using version control with Git. And uh, yeah, I felt that the, the, the sort of programming environment was getting in the way. But uh, recently, uh, the Polytronic magazine, it's a digital magazine about retro computing, has made available uh, a couple of IDEs where they have, on the one hand, uh, an emulated Apple II, and on the other hand, a modern editor where you can edit uh, either basic or assembly. And it's just awesome. And it's all online, so it's very simple. You simply have to open their website and you can start uh, happily coding in uh, assembly. So I figured it would be, you know, a great moment for me to learn this and I want to share this uh, journey with you. Um, so we're going to be using the book Assembly Lines by Roger Wagner, uh, edited by Chris Torrance. And also it's good to have uh, this book, The Apple II Monitor Peeled. This is uh, yeah, a book from the 80s with uh, information about all the monitor subroutines that we're going to be calling. So I'm going to put links to the books and to uh, the, these online um, programming environments that we're going to use. And I'll also, as usual, post uh, a link to the, the code, uh, the source code that we're going to write together. So yeah, that's, it's going to be fun and uh, yeah, definitely going to be fun for me and I hope you like it too. Okay, so this is the example. The first uh, example we find of a complete program in the book. And before we examine what it does line by line and uh, actually execute it, I want to call attention that this memory address FBDD that's uh, here, dollar $FBDD, uh, that's the kind of uh, the, the heart of this this program so in this memory location there is a routine that plays a sound just uh, rings a bell sound so this is in memory location fbdd in hexadecimal so what we can do is convert this to decimal uh, the lazy way and you see that uh, the we, we have both a, a an unsigned and a signed number. Uh, let's use the signed one, although any would work. So that's uh, minus uh, 1059. If we go to the basic interpreter, this is yeah, not uh, the, the, the assembly one. Uh, we're gonna, th this is the basic equivalent of the assembly program that we are going to write. 
So this is a basic program that does the equivalent of what our assembly program will do, which is to call a routine that's located in memory address fbdd or decimal minus 1059. So let's run it. So we hear a beep. That's what this uh, routine does. So now we go to the actual assembly. So here you see the opening screen. When you open uh, the Merlin uh, assembly environment in uh, paleotronic.com slash Merlin, and it comes already pre-filled with a simple hello world example. We are actually going for something even simpler than this. So let's modify this to look uh, the way we want. So I'm going to just delete these lines here. And I am going to also delete some other lines here and uh, here. So this org directive, it's basically telling you what is the base memory address where our program will reside. So it's going to sit at some point in memory and everything, including the code and data and everything will be on top of it. So we, we're going we're gonna to use uh, address uh, 300 uh, hexadecimal. This is what uh, the, the books example uses. Also, uh, we are going to define something called bell, and this bell will basically be a synonym of our FBDD memory address. So we say that bell it's equals. Uh, let's use the same coding convention that I see in code below and put this in uh, small caps. So dollar F B D D. So that's uh, just a bell. Now it's, it's it's like a variable, right? Or a constant in this case. We're saying that every time we say bell in our source code, that means dollar F B D D. Um, and then in our uh, uh, the start of our program, and you see these things are just executed sequentially. So here we have a label start. Just for clarity, we could not have this, but this uh, gives us clarity. So JSR, this uh, operand, this 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 um, sorry, this uh, opcode, this particular operation, means jump to subroutine. So when you call JSR, you are basically pointing the program program execution to continue at the memory address that you pointed. So that's the equivalent of our call to a certain uh, memory location. So it's going to transfer the execution flow to that particular uh, position in memory. And in our case, bell means uh, FBDD. And then uh, this line we don't need. This is from the past uh, program. So now we have the end. And the end, we uh, use the return subroutine operator, uh, and that uh, it's, it's basically the equivalent of a return after a goal sub in in basic. So we are returning the execution to the point that uh, called it. So you can imagine that the monitor subroutine that's sitting on memory address fbdd also has an rts right so it's going to do whatever it needs to do to actuate the the speaker to make the bell ring and then it's going to return subroutine so it's going to return to the caller and the caller is our program on line four and immediately after that we do a return uh, from subroutine and that, uh, I mean, when we execute our program, it's going to be executed uh, via the, the command prompt. 
So after our program executes, it's going to return to the caller and then the caller will be the, the command prompt. So there's also a check here. So this check is not strictly necessary. What it does is it will put a magic number in memory at the end of the program that uh, it's a checksum of the code of the program itself. It's basically something that can be used to verify the integrity of the program in memory. We don't really have to worry too much about it uh, right now. It's just a good practice to put it at the end. So once you have typed in your assembly code, you click this assemble button. And what happens is uh, it succeeded. Uh, and now uh, starting at base address 300, we have uh, five bytes of program. And you see that in basic our programs occupy larger amount of memory because really we are putting all the basic commands in there and uh, yeah, including the comments and so on. And here we are only putting uh, the, the, the compiler of, uh, of the, the assembler actually is, is taking this source code and it's creating a execution code that's much uh, smaller and concise. So it's using only a single byte for each one of the, the operation types of the opcodes. And then, yeah, it's only uh, uh, one byte for the memory address as well. So that's why uh, the, the program can be uh, so, uh, so small. It's just five bytes long, uh, this, this program. And we can have, in the source code, we can have nice comments. And by the way, we can add a comment here uh, just to show you how it's done. Yeah, we just put a semicolon. And that's, uh, you say, this is the uh, bell subroutine. Now I assemble again. And we still have the same five bytes, right? Uh, we, of course, we are not uh, putting as part of the program this uh, comment, but our source code can be much better commented and using uh, labels that uh, are clearer about what each part of the program does uh, than when we program basic just because of memory economy. So we have these five bytes and they are at this base address and now all we have to do is, you guessed, call uh, the subroutine that's now on memory address 300 but this is hexadecimal, and if we call it from basic, we need to use uh, decimal. And if we translate hexadecimal into decimal, that's 768. So we do call 768, and now we expect to hear our beep. There we go. So the last thing we can do here is take a look at our program in memory. To do that, we have to enter the monitor, and we do that by calling a subroutine that's in uh, memory location decimal minus 151. Okay, so the the prompt has changed, which means now we are at uh, we are we are inside the the Apple II monitor. So we can list the lines of code starting at a certain memory location. So what we're going to type here 300, that's our base address, and L as in list. And you can see here that what you what we have is uh, at this memory location, we have a jump to subroutine FBDD, and then that's at uh, memory location 300, and then a memory location 303 hexadecimal, we have an RTS. Uh, and then, yeah, our check comes after that, and then we have uh, zeros, which means there is no code going on here. So you can really see uh, how our, our code is uh, living in memory. Uh, we could even do the same for FBDD. So yeah, we don't have yet the knowledge to interpret uh, what all this code is doing, but you see this is also uh, um, machine code instructions that are disassembled here so we can see that uh, it's loading the accumulator 
uh, address uh, with the, the contents of a memory address uh, uh, 40 hexadecimal, and then it's uh, doing jumping to a subroutine and doing other magic here. We're going to get uh, more familiar with all these uh, different uh, instructions soon. But that uh, takes care of our first example. Yeah. See you next time.